What's up, guys? Yojimbo here, and we have the Diablo Fireside chat getting ready to start. This is an uh, emergency chat coming forward with the uproar of player concerns over the patch that came out on the 18th, which was in preparation for the start of the new season. A lot of people are very unhappy with this, and they're doing this Fireside chat here to answer some questions and comment some concerns and things like that about what's going on and give people an idea of where the game is going in the future. Let's take a look. All right, guys, so the fireside chat. Um, this fireside chat here was, again, putting out fires. Like we said, this wasn't a fireside chat. This was a putting out fires chat. And, you know, they needed to do it. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. They didn't need to do it. It is actually very lucky of us as players that they do come on and do these chats because we've seen time and time again with a number of games where the community managers and the devs eventually say, hey, enough is enough. We know we're fucking up, but we don't deserve to have the threats and, uh, you know, the bad. You know, everybody just spewing hate at us all the time. You know, and what we're going to do is we're really just going to hold ourselves up, you know, in our offices and and do the things that we need to do in the game without actually communicating with you guys. Uh, Destiny 2 just said that they're going to start doing this. And the reason for this is not because, um, you know, they don't they, obviously they know they're messing up. Right. But the thing is that nobody deserves to have hate spewed at them and stuff like that. It's just a video game. If you're somebody throwing threats at devs and stuff like that, you need to take a look at your life and see what's going on. But let's take a look at what this patch here uh, or I'm sorry, what this chat here talked about. We're going to condense it down. It was an almost two hour chat. They were five minutes late to their own uh, interviews, but all in all, I think that they said a lot of really good things. Um, and no, they didn't just come on and say, okay, we're undoing everything we did. So if that's what you're hoping for, I'm sorry, bucko, that ain't it. The first and foremost, uh, I think the one thing that we can take away from this is that they admitted that they messed up. Uh, they admitted that the, not, not so much that they messed up with the nerfs, but the way they, they did the nerfs was, uh, done incorrectly. And I think everybody can agree with that. I think that them admitting that they messed up is a very big thing. Um, they admitted at the beginning, they reiterated it at the end, and they pretty much said they don't want to do patches like that in the future, and they're going to have better planning uh, going forward. So what they want to do is, in the future, they want to release patch notes earlier. So as you know, we got these pa this patch and the patch notes on the same day. And it was just two days before the actual league launch, which obviously leaves no time for anybody to fix anything that might be a mistake or deal with any community feedback. So going on in the future, they do want to do the patches at least a week before the patch is going to drop. That way, the community has time to stew on it. And if it is some nerves and stuff in there, they can kind of, uh, you know, have some days to 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 get over it, essentially. But also, if there is anything in there that's certainly egregious, uh, the community can bring it up and they can take a look at getting it fixed before the patch actually comes out. The other mistake that they realized they made was that the uh, patch was all nerfs. There was there, there has to be a give and a take, right? So a lot of the nerfs were really necessary. Vulnerability is way too strong. Cooldown reduction is way too uh, good. Um, and the crit damage was, is obviously a strong outlier from all of the other modifiers. So those things did need to be looked at. But the problem is they didn't give us anything in return, and that never feels good. Um, so they do need to take a look at how they're doing that in the future and, uh, you know, and, and try to, you know, keep the balance between uh, between us here. I would say one of the biggest things that they did mention is that Nightmare Dungeons are getting nerfed. So if you could currently clear a level 70 Nightmare Dungeon, let's say your character uh, preseason was able to clear a level 70 Nightmare Dungeon, they did say that that's going to be the equivalent now to a level 100. So they didn't want the 100 to be so hard. And uh, I, I do kind of agree with that. They, 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 the problem was that the scaling of them got kind of out of control once you got above, let's just say, 50. 50 wasn't terrible, but that's kind of where it started getting a little bit out of control. Um, so they wanted to bring down the overall power level of the Nightmare Dungeons there, which is good. That means you can level up your glyphs faster because you'll be able to do higher dungeons, which give you more experience, so on and so forth. Uh, I think that's overall a, a net positive. Um, that does still lead to the fact that they need some sort of more endgame content to do other than Nightmare Dungeons, but that's talk for another day. They also did say that uh, the monster density is going to be increased significantly 
in Nightmare Dungeons. That means more experience. That means actually easier clearing. A lot of people might think that there's more monsters in the dungeons. It might be harder. And that is true. It will be a little bit harder, especially with CC effects and things like that. But also you have to remember that for a lot of builds, it actually kind of makes it easier because let's just use the Wernado build, for example. The downtime between mobs is the hard part. Your Grizzly Rage runs out. You're not getting lucky strike procs. You're, so your resource isn't coming back. You're not, uh, you know, you're not triggering your cooldowns, uh, you know, as much and stuff like that. So more mobs uh, kind of means that you're going to be maintaining those things and you'll be able to keep kind of steamrolling through the content, uh, you know, through the Nightmare Dungeon. They're also going to be changing the monster density to hell tides in specific areas that were underperforming. This is good because that more mobs and hell tides means more cinders and more cinders means it kind of counteracts the nerf that they did to the cost of the chests. Now, if you did play in some hell tides right after the patch went live, you would you probably notice that they weren't dropping any cinders at all. This was unintended. So uh, if you said you're never doing hell tide dungeons again because of that or hell tide areas again because of that, just know that it's been fixed and they are going to significantly buff the amount of monsters in hell tide zoo. Now, also remember that this means more experience, right? So more experience because of the more mobs in these areas. And that also goes along with an experience buff that they talked about in this fireside chat, where after level 50, they want the experience uh, to be smoother. So leveling from 1 to 50, very, very easy. And then it kind of turns to sludge after level 50, right? It's not a very like natural progression from 1 to 100. All right, 1 to 50, very smooth, and then it gets kind of uh, like you're walking through mud from 50 on up. Now, they don't want it to be extremely easy to get to 100, but they also don't want it to feel like it's a job to, to get to 100 after you get to 50. So they are going to put in some experience buffs from 50 on up. They do not want to buff the experience from 1 to 50 uh, going forward here yet. So be on the lookout for that. What better experience going into the future? Um, and one thing that they talked about that I know a lot of people are going to be happy about Though, uh, maybe not in the timeline that they had given us here, but they did say Sork and Barb buffs are going to be in the future. So that means not in today's hotfix patch that they're going to be putting out, uh, but they did say in patch 1.11, 1 uh, which is doesn't have a specific date. They kind of danced around it. They couldn't give us an exact date. They said a couple of weeks. They said they're, they're going to have another uh, post or chat about it next week, and it could come soon after that. But uh, if they gave anything specific that they would... Uh, pretty much had their heads chopped off so they couldn't give us a date on that but they did say that they want to uh, bring them up to par after their nerfs they did say that the legendary reworks are happening because obviously if you've played those two classes you know that the legendaries for both of them are extremely poor barbarians i don't think really have any worthwhile legendaries uh sorceresses are pretty much in the sorcerer sorceress is pretty much in the same boat they're just really 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 bad if you want to play a class that has really good meaningful legendaries you should definitely play druid uh theirs feel really good um though i will say some of their builds are pigeonholed into needing those legendaries which can be hard to come across specifically the wear nato helmet um one thing to talk about that a lot of people might not have even noticed so there a lot of people are probably really really mad about uh losing armor on the sorceress because you're not going to have skulls in your jewelry anymore because of the malignant hearts um this is something that uh blizzard could have farmed for some good karma from the community but they just didn't really mention it to anybody they did a hot fix and added armor onto the malignant hearts so now you're not losing out on that armor that you uh previously had from having skulls in your jewelry you are getting it back on your malignant hearts so be aware of that uh, you don't need to be mauling about that anymore. Uh, I think the biggest meme of this whole entire fire chat is probably the inventory problems. Okay, if if you if you're playing one character, it's just a little beginning of a problem. If you ever play more than one character, uh, you will extremely have this problem uh, when you're trying to save gear, legendary ass fixes, and uh, you know sigils and uh, just everything that you need to save. Uh, it, the inventory thing is just kind of insane, right? The fact that there's so many tabs that are shared with stuff. Now we have the malignant hearts and we have the invokers and we have all of this stuff that we need to store. Uh, you have all your legendary affixes, your rare gear that you're saving for future builds and stuff like that. Um, they did bring it up. They did discuss it. 
And they gave us a pretty meme of answer of they are adding one stash tab. That's right. One stash tab being added. Um, a lot of people are saying that the reason they're doing this is it shows intent to sell stash tabs in the future. That's why they only want to add one right now just to kind of get people to back off on the subject so that they can sell them later. I'm still not convinced that that's the thing. I don't think that they're going to sell them later. But I do uh, have question mark, question mark, question mark on that subject because why would you just add one? Uh, do, it's literally a huge problem that everybody in the community is feeling. So it's, it's not like it's just a small niche of people. Everybody is pretty much in agreement with this. Diablo 3 has more stash tabs. Every modded version of Diablo adds stash tabs because of it being a problem in the older games. Last Epoch has infinite stash tabs nearly. Uh, you know, Path of Exile has infinite stash tabs, though you do have to spend money on them. Uh, it, it, there's just no reason to limit the amount of stash that you can have. There's no reason to limit it. It doesn't make any sense. And I would, I would love for them to just give us an actual answer on to what the problem is with that it feels like an out of touch april fool's joke um I, I just don't understand it they did say though that they will be increasing these stacks of e for elixirs up to 99 so uh we will be able to store a lot more elixirs this means you will not have to put them in your stash you can just keep them in your actual inventory tab um and honestly a lot of you guys just throw away the elixirs you don't need you don't need the resistance ones Get rid of them. Just get rid of them. Stop hoarding the elixirs. You don't need them. Okay? That's a serious thing. You don't need them. Um, but they, they do need to... They, I just don't understand why they're so held on to the stash thing. Uh, they did bring back up that gems will be turning into materials, but not into Season 2. So once Season 2 hits, that will give us some more stash space where we won't have to be hoarding our gems in our stash or inventory anymore. Um, they're going to be changing that into a material and it will go into your material page, uh, whatever that thing is. Um, they brought up respects. So respects are going to be a bit cheaper. They did say they're going to lower the cost of respects, uh, which I don't think that was the problem. I don't think anybody actually had a problem with the cost of respects. It cost a couple million gold to respect. Um, I can respect four times for the cost of what it takes to reroll my ring one single time. So I don't think that the cost of respecting was seriously a problem, but... Hey, if it is cheaper to respect now, hey, that means I'll be able to do more rolls on my gear, I guess. So I'm not going to uh, look a gift horse in the mouth there. It's, I'm going to take it. I'll, I'll take all the help I can get there. What we did want, though, was quality of life for respects, like being able to uh, get rid of an entire Paragon board with just a click, not have to go through and, and unclick every single node that we clicked. That's very annoying, but they did not mention any quality of life coming for that type of thing. So we are still waiting. Um, they did mention an armory, or there was a question about an armory from Twitch chat. They said they're thinking about it. But that's all they could really. Uh, that's all they could really tell us. They didn't give us any specific answer on that. They uh, they did add the scroll of amnesia to the game, so maybe they could make that more common, so that way you could do a full respec at the click of a button. Currently, I'm pretty sure the only one that you can get is from finishing your season journey. Maybe they're just doing it as a way to test, and if it comes out good, then they'll add it into more things in the future. Uh, we talked about the experience buff at level 50 leaderboards coming in season three. They did still confirm that leaderboards are coming in season three. And they said the reason that they have not added them yet is because they want to add new content that is specific for the leaderboards. So they don't want the leaderboards to be like for nightmare dungeons or getting level 100 or whatever experience gained or whatever the case may be. Uh, they want a new form of content that is going to be specific for the leaderboards. This makes me think of like greater rifts from Diablo 3. So who can clear the highest rift in the lowest amount of time? Um, this would be my guess. Uh, pretty much, you know, greater rifts confirmed for season three, guys, or something similar. Uh, I'm okay with this. I mean, new content added into the game. To be completely honest, I don't understand how the game launches without leaderboards. I don't understand how multiple third-party websites have the information for leaderboards and uh, you know are, are pretty accurate from what I've seen. And the devs can't just get basic leaderboards added into the game. It's a very important thing for new seasons. That's what most people look forward to. That's what urges people to, uh, you know, play the game more and compete and stuff like that. And they just don't have it. So, and, and not even going to be here for season two either, which is kind of a bummer, but confirmed for season three. 
one really big piece of news is that uh, they did say soon possibly on loop filters they blamed the ui team they said the ui team is working on it they're very excited about it um it's just not something that's ready to be announced soon but loop filters in the future could definitely be a thing and that would be nice because they are aware of the fact that looking at every single rare item that drops on the ground uh does make your eyes bleed at some point in time and it is kind of annoying to have to look at uh so many useless modifiers on so many pieces of the item and you're kind of have to just look at it all because you just you, you the the update the upgrades are so few and far in between that you really don't want to miss one in a full inventory there so um you do have to keep an eye on every single thing that you pick up they did ask a question about why they added two seconds onto the cast time for leaving dungeons they gave us a non-answer there there was a non-answer on why and, you know, I don't think people really actually care that it takes two extra seconds to leave a dungeon, right? It, people don't care if it takes five seconds to leave a dungeon instead of three seconds. What people care about is why they made the change from three seconds to five seconds. Why did you come? What were you thinking about? What was the decision making progress to make you guys say, you know what? We don't need to add more stash tabs. What we need to do is change it from three to five seconds on leaving a dungeon, right? That's, we care about the intent more, more than what actually happened there. And they gave us a non-answer for that. Um, they pretty much just, you know, they, they skirted around it and said something about adding the reset dungeon button back, which they did do. And I don't really understand how that has anything to do with uh, leaving a dungeon. So it takes two extra seconds to leave a dungeon and click the reset button and go back to the dungeon. I, really i don't understand that's a non-answer um, people are gonna be memeing on that for quite a bit there was a really good question from twitch chat about using act bosses as dungeon fights and i and i do this is something that i've brought up before i don't understand why they don't do that um i would say i i would say that there could be a little bit of concern about them lore wise doing that right they don't want to you know mess up any lore about having you know, Andario in a dungeon or something like that. But then you have, I mean, you just can go infinitely fight Uber Lilith at the end of a dungeon, right? And that doesn't make any sense. She's technically dead. So why is she in a dungeon? That doesn't make any sense lore wise. So it kind of throws that one out the window. But when they did ask that question from Twitch chat, they all kind of had the same response and said, though they can't really mention it, but they're all in agreement that it should be a thing. And, uh, you know, maybe coming soon with a little laugh, giggle, smirk. So, something to look forward to coming in the future, perhaps. Because, honestly, I'm tired of fighting Tomb Lord, uh, you know, 6 out of 10 dungeons, and then fighting, um, you know, the Den Mother in 3 out of uh, the other 10 dungeons. And it's it, we need more variety. It's, it's really kind of annoying. You have 100 dungeons and 4 bosses, you know? So, hopefully, that's something to work on. Uh, you know, we have a lot of bosses, um, you know, uh, and honestly... Uh, I'm really bad here. I can't remember his name on the fly. The guy who had the, you know, with the walked on the dogs, he had the soul stone in his head. That guy be a cool boss for a dungeon. Obviously, you have Andario, you have Mephisto. Um, you know, we, we got a bunch of these enemies that we met throughout the campaign. Um, why are we not seeing them anymore? They're honestly just wasted assets right now because you don't even have to redo the campaign anymore, right? You can just completely skip it. So, and Dario, Durio, all of them completely wasted assets. One and done. You'll never see them again if you don't do the campaign or they don't make a change to the bosses here coming up soon. They also, this is a really big one. And if you've made it this far into the video, uh, we saved it for last. Um, I appreciate you guys for being here. Like, subscribe, come back for more. One really big thing that they did hint at is possibly new crafting coming, quote unquote, soon maybe uh they really did skirt around this but uh they did mention that they would like to see more ways to modify your items in the future and for me personally this is a huge thing that they need to keep the game more interesting and crafting gear and being able to tailor your gear to your style your character your build right now the current way of crafting essentially is the exact same as it was in diablo 3 you're just re-rolling one affects and it's uh it honestly is the most mediocre crafting thing that exists. Every other ARPG that is not Diablo has a significantly better crafting system. Path of Exiles is way too complicated for uh, the normal, the average gamer. 
Um, but something like Last Epoch has an amazing crafting system that I think a lot of people could really get their hands on and uh, get in and start making some really, really cool items in Diablo 4. And also it would give more meaning to all these materials that we're picking up that just get put into this material slot that we never even see again um, that are you know, basically useless, let's be completely honest. Um, so it would be nice to see that in the future too, some more crafting options. Maybe it'll be like a seasonal mechanic or something, and then they'll keep it in post. They'll keep it in post season. I would really, really like that, guys. But hey, guys, that is the uh, that is the two hour, almost two hour long campfire chat summed up for you in less than twenty minutes, or just at twenty minutes here. Um, I I have high hopes going into the future of Diablo 4. I do think the dev team has aspirations for great things for the game. Uh, whether they can actually get it out to us is a different story. But remember, just be kind to the devs and everybody else too. There's no reason to spew around hatred. Uh, if you're not enjoying the game, just play something different. And that's not to say that, you know, we don't want you in the game, but that is to say that that's the best way to speak to the devs about not enjoying the game is through player numbers. Um, just don't play the game if you're not enjoying it. Go play something else. Come back a little bit uh, later. See what they've added and have fun with it then. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Adios, muchachos.